Welcome to Cold Brew Chats. I'm excited to be joined today by one of our Team Infinite athletes. He is a six-time Ontario Cup Road Series champion, the Canadian Hour Record Holder, the 40 to 44 World Hour Record Holder, and a World Cup Gold Medalist. Please help me welcome Canadian racing cyclist, Ed Veal to the show today. Welcome, Ed. Hi, thanks for having me. Yeah, thanks so much for being here with us. Um, I wanna get right into it today. I wanna to talk about you as a racing cyclist. I know uh, you were a latecomer to the sport. So tell us about this whole process. Uh, yeah, I wasn't really searching out uh, cycling or sport at all. I had uh, kind of grown up after playing high school football, you know, you know, uh, really wasn't part of my life. I had a lot of other things on my plate. And then uh, around 27 uh, years of age, I had a buddy that was a mountain biker, just was relentless, bugged the crap out of me, and I uh, said I had to mountain bike. Uh, so eventually I gave in to him, and yeah, I just goes hooked. So, so yeah, it kind of went from like no sport to all I was thinking was sport. So whipping in through the trails and uh, on the verge of death, and yeah, kind of took over my life. <laughs> um, so how do you find that? I mean, being a latecomer to the sport, do you kind of see any disadvantages there or have you been able to, you know, catch up to speed? I see that you've had lots of championships and things like that. So clearly you're right up to speed with everybody else. Yeah, it's been a while now. So latecomer, uh, you know, I'm, I'm going to be uh, 44 this year. So I've been doing it a long time. But yeah, back then I was new. So when someone was, you know, I was lining up with another 27 year old, for example, maybe they've been you know, on their bike since they were 10 or, you know, they had 10 years experience or whatever. So, um, but yeah, uh, I think hunger, that, that was one thing. Like, you know, if someone's been doing it a long time or their whole life or all through their childhood, you know, I, I was coming in new as a, as a big kid, as a big goofball. And uh, I think, you know, just excitement and passion and wanting to, uh, you know, catch up, you know, being a little bit of an underdog. So that was, I think that uh, is an advantage, a definite advantage. Uh, another advantage is I'm, I'm not beat up. Uh, so, you know, like, you know, even though, you know, I look grizzled, you know, I really haven't been doing this that long. So uh, that's, a, you know, my body's been, uh, it's not like, you know, there's, there's guys that are the same age as me. They've been doing this for, you know, 25 years when, I, you know, I've been doing it for, you know, 15. So. Mm -hmm. For sure. And um, so what do you like so much about it that you've continued to do it over all these years? I like racing. I think that's, uh, it's just the racing part. Um, if it was just a fitness contest or if it was just working out or whatever, I, you know, I, I enjoy that, but I, I love racing. I love getting from point to point as fast as possible. Uh, and I definitely like the bunch racing when you're, you know, head to head with other people, uh, all the tactics, strategy, the mind games, uh, that, you know, the combination of risk, uh, as far as danger and then risk uh, with win or losing, you know, like you gotta, you gotta risk. And so, you know, it's, it's like chess and, uh, and poker, you know, and then, uh, and then you're, you know, you're, you know, sweating and uh, your lungs are, you know, I you know, tasting blood and, you know, mm -hmm. I love all that stuff. So all that combination, mm -hmm. that's, that's what I love. Right. No, that makes sense. Um, so talking about that, how exactly um, do you train? I know maybe it looks a little bit different right now, but take us through a typical week maybe for yourself. Well, I'm, I'm definitely, uh, love to train. I, you know, I, uh, <laughs> that's all I do. <laughs> so, my day revolves around training. So, you know, I, I like to, you know, fit in a bunch of stuff, but my priority pretty much every day is to say, you know, when's my bike ride, you know, when am I hitting the gym? Uh, if I'm doing any, uh, you know, floor exercises, any yoga, any stretching, flexibility, range of motion stuff. Uh, so, I mean, I'm seven days a week. Uh, and uh, I try and double up uh, as much as I can. Uh, pr I'm pretty beat up today, so I mean, these are the days where you know you gotta you gotta evaluate you know how hard you've been pushing yourself. Um, but yeah, I mean, I ride between say 14 and 20 hours a week, um, and then yeah, I've all the other stuff that complements it. So you know, I've been running, uh, hit the stairs. I've been trying to do some uh, strength stuff in the gym. Uh, but yeah, well, biking comes first and then that stuff's uh, always a bonus. Mm -hmm. That makes sense for sure. It's nice that you can do, you know, a bunch of different things. Obviously the biking is your priority, but it's nice to be able to work in other aspects of fitness as well. Um, so I know that you're also a full-time coach for Real Deal Racing. So tell us a little bit, you know, about this, when this all started. Well, I, I, once again, that just kind of happened. I wasn't, 
you know, I, I guess I'd uh, climbed the ranks pretty quickly and people were taking notice and, you know, just, I just noticed people were asking me like, how, how are you doing this? Like, how, how'd you, uh, you know, start and get so quick, so fast and, uh, and then continue to progress. And so just by answering those questions and just sharing, you know, kind of what I was doing, uh, I just thought there was a need and I still coach that way to this day. It's, uh, it's not what, you know, uh, I don't know. It's not out of a book. It's not, uh, you know, kind of the cookie cutter thing that I see everyone else following. Um, it really is, Hey, Hey, Ed, you know, what, what do you do? And, you know, I said, Hey, this is what I do. This is what's working for me. This is, uh, what continues to work for me. So yeah, I love it. Um, I, I work with only a, a handful of people. I don't have like a, you know, a big roster, you know, I, I really only work with people uh, I want to work with. It's, it's a lifestyle thing too, but uh, it's extremely rewarding. And uh, yeah, I hope, I hope to coach until who knows forever, ever. Yeah. Would you say, um, when you talked about that, do you have like a specific kind of coaching philosophy or do you find that it kind of varies between each athlete or? Oh, definitely. No, no, it's kind of, yeah, each athlete is, is totally different. That's why working with only a small group is, is awesome because you really get to know people and it's, it, it's pretty intimate. You know, it's, uh, there's way more going on than just, uh, lifting weights or riding a bike. You know, you got to manage, uh, relationships and, uh, man, there's lots of stress, you know, people's uh, business, uh, you know, so yeah, there's, there's way more to it. So, uh, I mean, I've been joking when people ask me that my, my joke answer is always, uh, my coaching philosophy is tough love without the love. <laughs> yeah. That answers the question. <laughs> yeah. um, no, that sounds awesome. That's great. It's nice that you can keep it kind of close knit too, because obviously you have all your own training that you're doing, but it's nice that you can help other people out at the same time. But that, see, that's um, the, another bonus right now is that, um, you know, I'm doing that along with people. That's, that's the cool thing. Is since, since day one, it wasn't like I was uh, talking about my glory days or back in the day or when I was like, a lot of the, a lot of the times people are lining up to the same event, you know, they're training for the same thing. They, you know, so we're doing this together. And so that's very, keeps me, uh, you know, when I'm training and uh, then prescribing certain workouts and I'm doing it right along with them. Uh, I don't know. I just feel that's a big advantage to some coaches that have been kind of out of the game for a while. So, you know, I, I know when I'm, you know, given a, a, a max heart rate effort or, you know, some sort of, uh, you know, crazy ramp test, you know, uh, then I'm accountable to do it myself and I know I just went through it. So, um, yeah, that's, uh, so I, you know, I, maybe that won't last forever, but I, I got a feeling that might too. No, that's great. That's really cool that you've been able to do that. Um, so let's talk a little bit about your relationship with infinite. I'm not entirely sure when it started, but maybe just take us through that. Okay. So, uh, I, uh, where did it begin? I, I was going to do an event, a 24 hour event uh, in London at the Four City Velodrome. And uh, just so happened, uh, Darcy from Infinite sent me an email asking, you know, um, about our team's needs and, you know, if I had a nutrition provider. And uh, I just sent him, I was like, your timing couldn't have been more perfect. I'm about to do this crazy 24 hour event and go after, a, you know, Canadian distance record and, and, uh, and uh, so he said, well, what's your nutrition plan? And we had a good laugh when I said I didn't have one. And so, you know, right away, he got a snapshot to me, uh, kind of going into this and, uh, you know, not having uh, that part of it all set up. I was working on so many things um, to get this event going, um, but I had a big hole left, you know, like, you know, how was I going to fuel this? And so, man, did he, he helped out in a massive way and had a plan and, you know, asked, you know, man like I, I just afterwards i you know it, i was so thankful and grateful for the introduction to him and the product and everything went extremely well so uh yeah that was the beginning awesome and so uh when you talk about the product what exactly do you use or i don't know maybe you use a few what are your kind of go-to's okay so that's that's good i i like it all so i i have not tried everything but uh definitely uh the power uh, is probably what I use the most. The jet fuel, uh, you know, I've, I've had bottles of that. I mean, I've had bags of that. I mean, I probably, I don't know how much I've consumed, but a lot. But uh, I, maybe my favorite is the cold brew. I think that's, uh, that's probably my favorite. I'm, uh, I love caffeine. I drink a lot of coffee, but um, having it cold in a bottle and still, you know, uh, with protein and everything, I don't know. It just, it eases, uh, really easily mixes. And I, I just find it so easy to drink. So I think mm -hmm. cold brew is probably my favorite. But I love yeah. it all. I'd have to agree with you. <laughs> so good. Um, 
So just uh, talking a little bit, I guess, about kind of what we're going through right now during these times um, in the pandemic, what, you know, what exactly have you been up to? How has your training been impacted? Or, I mean, obviously there's no competition going on. So what's your update here for us? Well, when it first happened, I, I thought nothing changed. Uh, I was, you know, my lifestyle didn't change. I work from home. I'm training from home. You know, I, uh, I just kind of went about my business. Uh, I, lately, I've been realizing I'm, I, it has affected me a lot. My, my identity is racing. My racing has been taken away. I, you know, I've been moody and cranky and, you know, kind of searching for, you know, what do I do? You know, uh, so, I mean, I've been training, I've been just looking at this as an opportunity. Uh, you know, I go through waves just like everybody else, but I, I, I really been uh, cranking it up. And I think that's, you know, one of the things on coming out on the other side of this, I want to say I did, I used that time wisely. And, uh, you know, if I can squeeze out, you know, uh, whatever kind of performance gains, that's really what I'm trying to do. So, you know, I, uh, when the racing is, season is around, you, you've got to kind of rest a bit on the weekends when you have an event. And now without that, I can really, uh, you know, just, you know, like I said, crank things up, go extremely hard, not have to taper, or, you know, tone it down every weekend because I'm, I'm managing the, the race schedule. So we'll see. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, uh, you know, with uh, we've got some big goals for next year. So hopefully this is uh, going to be that, that star on the, the training plan that says, hey, that, that, that was perfect. The right timing, right place, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it seems like you just you have to try and do what you can, I guess, right, find the positives in this and hopefully it'll all work out in the long run. Um, so you touched a little bit on let's talk a little bit about the mental side of the sport you just mentioned, you know, going through this, you've kind of had some ups and downs. So uh, how important is that to your training and your competition? Oh, it, it's everything. I, that's, that's, uh, I think, you know, every cliche you've heard, you know, about mental, I, I believe it's, it's all. So you don't, you don't do anything, uh, without your brain telling you to, you know, like I, uh, I mean, that's why I love cycling so much is I, I really believe it's the hardest sport out there. I, you know, I've, I've played everything and this is it. And that's why I like it. It's uh, it's a roller coaster ride. It chews people up and spits them out there. You know, it's uh and, uh, you know, I think from the beginning, I've always felt myself as an underdog, you know, starting late, uh, you know, I'm not really built for cycling. I have to work really hard to be light and lean. Um, you know, I, I don't know, that's, that's so that mental game of the, the underdog and always, you know, having to reprove things and, and fighting and trying to climb the ladder, you know, that's, uh, you know, that hunger, you know, hopefully it never goes away. But that's, if I didn't have that, then there'd be none of this. And, you know, I wouldn't be talking to you and there'd be no, uh, you know, uh, that whole list of things you open with. You know? so, <laughs> so yeah, the mental side is everything. Yeah. Um, do you do anything in particular, like in terms of kind of mental training, brain training, those types of things? I, I, you know, if I go into a bookstore, that's all I pick up. That's all I'm drawn to. So, I mean, I'm constantly reading. That's, uh, you know, I, but, you know, I, nothing specific. No, I, I, not right off the top of my head, I can't think of anything specific. Uh, other than that, just being my wiring, you know, and that's, that's what I'm drawn to. So, I mean, whether it's on the internet or, uh, you know, I, I just posted something recently, uh, Mike Tyson, uh, you know, everyone has a plan until they get punched in the face. You know, like that's, that's, I love that stuff, you know, so uh, uh, it's part of my makeup. You know, I don't, I can't say it's a particular book, but, you know, um, but yeah, that's, I'm trying to think right now. Nothing specific off the top of my head. But every day, all the time, uh, you know, that focus on the mental side, for sure. Yeah, no, that's great. Um, so just to kind of finish off here, I just want to ask for anyone listening to this, um, any types of, I guess, advice or tip that you can offer in terms of nutrition? So maybe it's something that you've kind of learned along the way that's helped you as an athlete um, that someone listening might benefit from. Yeah, okay. Well, everything I've done has been part of a team. And, uh, you know, you, you have a role, you have a job, you do it well, but you can't be expected to know everything. And so it's kind of like stay in your lane. You know, there's things that are just beyond my scope. And when that happens, I love to have a, a trusted expert to look after that for me. And so, you know, that's my advice to anyone is, you know, I mean, you can get out there, research it, you can, you know, make this your passion, you can, but I, I would rather rely on someone else that is extremely passionate about this. And that's one uh, thing I found out with, uh, from the very first phone call, you know, I was like, wow, I'm 
just not into nutrition like Darcy's into nutrition. You know, like I just, I couldn't. Uh, and, you know, for 30 minutes, he told me every ingredient and where he searched out and why they made those choices. And, and there was not even, there was nothing left to chance. And so I knew I was in good hands. So, um, so yeah, that's, you know, like you trust your team, surround yourself with a, an awesome team. Yeah, definitely. And then what about just in terms of the kind of physical aspect of the um, sport or even the mental side of it? Anything that's helped you um, grow as an athlete? Uh, if it's in regards to like specific to nutrition is um, I'm chasing ease. Okay. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm okay with it. You know, I like ease. And so when it mixes well, and it, the bottles clean up well. And when my stomach doesn't get this, uh, upset and I can just pound bottle after bottle after bottle, you know, I, I think that to me is, uh, you know, it takes the thinking away and makes it very easy to, you know, uh, the application's easy and, you know, the, the whole process is easy. I, I, I'm chasing easy. So. Mm-hmm. Okay, great. And then, um, just even in terms of your like physical training, so your, um, you know, your weightlifting sessions, your cycling sessions, all those kinds of things. Is there anything that you've kind of learned along the way that's helped you as an athlete, you know, any sort of tip here for someone training week after week after week? Uh, I think uh, a lot of times you, you rely on the, the glycogen window a little too much. And so if you're an endurance athlete, you might not understand that, you know, you have the stored energy and if you're not replacing that, you're, you're, you know, you're kind of in a deficit. And so it took me a while to understand that where I would be feeling unbelievable for, you know, an hour or 90 minutes, you know, and I wouldn't, I wouldn't have to drink or I wouldn't have to, you know, uh, fuel. And, uh, and then all of a sudden, you know, I'm thinking, oh, I'm out of shape or I'm, you know, I got to work on my endurance or all of a sudden I feel so depleted and fatigued. And, and, you know, you can only fail that way so many times before, you know, you realize, okay, hold on, hold on. You know, it's just like a car. It's just like anything else. You're not, you know, replacing the fuel that you're burning, uh, you know, you, you, you're going to bonk, you're going to fail. So that, that's, you know, to me right now saying that on a video, it just seems so obvious, but when I first started, it wasn't obvious and it took a long time to, uh, to understand that. So, mm-hmm. um, so yeah, I mean, we, we had, uh, training camps where we'd, uh, you know, we'd be with the Canadian national team and, uh, they were really trying to beat us into us that we had to eat every 20 minutes. So put something in our mouth every 20 minutes. And so, you know, we'd be climbing these Canyon mountains and that the follow car would just honk the horn every 20 minutes, honk the horn. And so we'd all have to kind of like show what we were putting in our mouth, whether, you know, whether it was a, you know, a piece of, of a bar or a gummy or gel or whatever, or drinking a, a mixed drink. And so, that was, uh, you do that for seven hours, every 20 minutes, you, it, it's, it's, uh, it's habit forming. And so, you know, I, and to this day, I still look at my Garmin and I'm amazed 20 minutes goes by like that. And, mm-hmm. you know, and I haven't had a drink or put something, you know, in my mouth. So mm-hmm. oh, that's great. Perfect. Thank you so much. Um, that's it on my end here. Is there anything else that you wanted to chat about? Uh, yeah, not, not, not that I, you know, I'm a big fan. So I mean, I could go on and on and on about how you guys, how well you guys treat me. And every time I come in there, I feel like a rock star. And I think some of the conversations I've had with, uh, uh, you know, Darcy, uh, you know, I mean, I wish I could bottle, you know, some of this, the knowledge and stuff he's, he's passed on to me. So mm-hmm. no, I'm just uh, really, uh, I'm very proud to be an infinite athlete. And, uh, you know, I, in this, even this uh, Colbert chat, I think it's, I think it's wonderful. Awesome. Thank you so much.